human. Without a doubt, the smartest animal on Earth. Yet we're unmistakably tied to our ape origins. Millions of years ago, we were apes, living ape lives in Africa. So how did we get from that to this? What happened? What set us on the path to humanity? The questions are huge, but at last, there are answers. More than six million years ago, we took the first step to separate from the apes. Since then, there have been at least 20 types of human ancestor in our family tree. Some of them were on their way to being us. Others were evolutionary dead ends. As recently as 50,000 years ago, there were probably four different kinds of humans living at the same time. Yet today, we are a species alone. Why did we survive and all the others disappear? New discoveries are shining light on the final stages of our evolution. We're finding out where our species, Homo sapiens, came from. The genetic record shows us that all modern humans are descended from a small population of approximately 600 breeding individuals. And we are discovering how they spread through the world pushing out other ancient humans, like the Neanderthal. The Neanderthals were very successful humans. They, they have lived in Europe for maybe 300, 400,000 years, but eventually they were replaced by modern humans. But why were they replaced by modern humans? The mystery of the Neanderthal disappearance is finally being solved as the secrets of their genetic code are unlocked. We're discovering exactly what made them different from us and how we're unique. So join us as we explore the origins of our own species. Find out why we're the last human standing right now on NOVA. Imagine a world with only a tiny number of us in it. Perhaps just a few thousand. A recently evolved species, we are completely at the mercy of the natural forces around us. 140,000 years ago, Homo sapiens teetered on the brink of extinction. New discoveries are revealing how, from these humble beginnings, we took over the planet, eventually replacing other ancient humans who were already living there, Homo erectus and the Neanderthals. Humans have a very intensive way of using the environment. Humans move into the Middle East, the Homo erectus starts going extinct. When humans move into Europe, the Neanderthals go extinct. For almost 400,000 years, the Neanderthals lived in Ice Age Europe. Superb hunters, they had brains bigger than ours and a record of survival twice as long. They were the most advanced humans on Earth until we arrived. And then they vanished. Why? Finally, we're unearthing the answer. The remains of a 100,000-year-old child are revealing what we had that they didn't. It's essential to figure out what are the differences between the Neanderthals and us to, to figure out what is special about us. Was it some new physical ability? Or was it a new way of thinking? These questions go to the heart of what makes us human. To answer them, we must travel back in time to the beginning of our human story. Imagine the entire span of recorded human history, taking us back to the Egyptian pyramids 5,000 years ago, doubling 10,000 years ago, 
when plants were domesticated and agriculture begins, double it again, to the time when Ice Age hunters paint stunning images on cave walls and keep doubling six more times. And we are finally entering the world of Homo erectus, the remarkable ancestor who pioneered what it means to be human. Homo erectus appeared on the African plains almost two million years ago. They were the first ancestors who had bodies like ours. They were hunter-gatherers and tool-makers, beings who lived in social groups and cared for each other. The most famous Homo erectus is the fossil called Turconobor. Well, Turconoboy and his ancestors, they represent a threshold. They represent that, that point in our evolution when we, were, we weren't quite fully a human, but we were no longer an ape. Paleo artist Victor Deke specializes in creating scientifically based sculptures of ancient humans from their fossil remains. As he reconstructs Turconoboy's head, ape-like features emerge heavy brow ridges, a protruding lower face, a skull still smaller than our own. But despite these differences, Turkana boy is definitely starting to look like a human being. And behind those eyes, his mind was becoming human too. I suspect that complex feelings and and behaviors had their beginnings with Turconoboy's kind, and that what it is to truly be a human had its bubblings at that point. It was probably Homo erectus, almost two million years ago, who first started to leave Africa. Ever since, Africa has been the engine of our evolution, pumping out wave after wave ancient humans who populated Europe and Asia. Settling in far off places, they developed in their own special ways. An early wave gave rise in Indonesia to the extraordinary hobbit, perhaps a type of dwarf Homo erectus. Another wave took Homo erectus all the way to China where fossil remains have been dated to over 700,000 years ago. Soon after, another wave left Africa, this time heading for Europe. This was the species that would one day give rise to the Neanderthal. Ever since the first skull was discovered in Heidelberg, Germany, they have been called Homo heidelbergensis, but almost nothing was known about it until one extraordinary find was made. At a puerca in northern Spain, these rolling hills have turned out to be an archaeological gold mine. When a railway was built over a hundred years ago, it cut right through the hills 